Our scripture for today is... From the Bible, Isaiah 55, 12, 13, you go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper, which apparently is better than a thorn bush. And instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be, my grandma had a friend myrtle. This will be for the Lord's renown, renown for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. So that's a good word for today. Trees of the field will clap their hands and good things will happen. All right. Today's topic is what? Review. I have one exercise I want to go through and a couple uh like one other thing that I want to cover, and then I'll answer questions, and then that's about it. Here's Sam the man. Okay. Once I wanted to talk about the One of the problems on exam two that a lot of you, uh, I think most of you probably got this right, but not everybody, about bonds, just kind of uh, reiterate something about bonds. I have a blank version here somewhere, but I thought I did, maybe I don't. The, uh, a bond in problem two, on test two, we had a bond that has a face value of 23,000. That means whoever has that piece of paper gets a gets $23,000 at the end of a certain period of time. So they're getting that back. In between there, they're getting some interest payments. In this one, it says 11% per year semi-annual. Semi means half. So every six months. Maturity date in 18 years. Now it doesn't say if that's the original or if that's just what we have from this point. And the, uh, so this is going to come to whoever holds the paper in 18 years. From right now, we'll call right now zero. So 11% per year, semi-annually, every six months. That means they'll, you'll get something every six months. So per year semi-annually, so that's 5%, 5.5% every six months. So 23,000 equals, what is that number? I don't have it handy here, but thought I did, but someone do that calculation. Or pull out your test if you did it right. And, and so that's the cash flow. Then the question is, what is it worth to this person now? One, two, six, five? Yep. Two, six, five. Per six months. 
So the interest rate, market interest rate is 12% market interest, that means it says person wants to purchase it and earn the market rate. So that's their MAR. They want to earn 12% is what it says. So since the payments are every six months, we might as well take that 12% and divide it by 2, 6% for each 6 months. Don't overthink it too much. Just say, okay, this is our cash flow. I want 12% per year. Yeah, we'll say that 6% every 6 months. So we'll go through two periods per year, and so we have 36 periods. So the present worth of that future cash flow is the 12.65 every six months. We take that a P over A, 6% and 36. And then we also get the 23,000 at the end of that. So P over F, 6%, 36 again. And that turns out to be You want to have that correct answer in your test somewhere? Or? It's like 21,000 something, right? Wasn't it? Yep, Britt. Um, why did you divide the 23,000 into 1,200? Uh, so, so the bond, the terms of the bond is that you get 11% per year semi-annually, which means 5.5% per six months. If it was quarterly, you divide that by four. So, on top of that, you get the full amount at the end? Yes, and on top of that, you get the full amount at the end. So this is like 21,000 something. Now, some, some of you uh, were thinking, well, it's a $23,000 bond, so I've got to pay $23,000. It's worth $21,000, so it's actually a negative present worth there. I take this minus the $23,000, I have to pay for it. And I think I took off one point, maybe two. I don't rem remember now. I would have my key with me, but for that. It's not, that's not correct, but it's not, you know, it's, I could see how you could think that. So this is somebody owns this piece of paper, this bond, and it comes, it matures, the 23,000 is in 18 years. Maybe it just started, it's an 18 year bond, maybe it's a 30 year bond and we're 12 years into it, it doesn't tell us in the problem. But well, that's what it's worth. So the bond terms, 23,000, that tells you you get 23,000 at the end of it, at the maturity. And then it also has a percent per year and how often that's distributed. So that tells you the, the cash flow. And once I have that cash flow, then I can forget that it's a bond. I just know that this is, I have something gives me this cash flow, and then I can analyze it with my methods that I have. And again, don't, if, it, if it's 12% uh, per year taken quarterly, do it 
every three months. So 18 years would be 72 periods in that case. So don't, don't overthink it too much. Same with the MAR or the, that you're going to analyze it at. Just divide that, quarterly divide that into four, semi-annually divide it by two. That. All right, any questions on the bond? All right, the, the other example I want to go through, and I didn't, I don't think we did this in class, although like it is a benefit cost problem. And this is uh, stuff that came after test two, but is on the final. So I'll turn you loose for a few minutes to work on this. There you go. On your own or with those around you. And then we'll go back through it. So we have three alternatives here. Calculate the IRR for each of them. 100 year study period. Annual worth, present worth, and then the benefit cost ratio of each one. And that's not the end of the story. That just tells you which of those has the benefit cost ratio. And then you need to walk through it with the incremental benefit cost ratio method and uh, see which one comes out as the champ. So again, you start with the cheapest one. And then you go to the next one. You see if that you get an extra 10000 a year. Is that worth the extra 30000 that it costs. And then you take the champion between those two, it takes on the aquaculture. All right, go. may look a whole lot like something you've seen before, but your exam. You see that? Yes. Okay. Oh, and
What did you get for the IRR, the rate of return on the beautification? Can you do that? Is that right? So remember IRR, you set present worth equal to zero. That's at what interest rate does the money you get pay for the money you got to put out? So in this case, this would be equals minus 520 plus 80 times P over A, I, the unknown I, and N of 100, which is really the same thing as infinity. Let me take this out to infinity and beyond there. In the, uh, so in other words, the... P over A, I, 100, or infinity, equals 520 over, wait, I did the wrong, is 20 over 80. If something goes out forever, it turns out that the A over P is just 
the interest rate, or P over A, equals 1 over the interest rate. So the interest rate <coughs> equals 80 over 520, which is 15.4%, we said. So the other ones are, so this one would be 90 over 550, and this one would be 100 over 620. I don't know what those numbers are off the top of my head. What does the annual worth for the beautification turn out to be? <coughs> it's positive, right? Oh, annual worth of initial cost. Oh, yeah, yeah you're right. Sorry. So it's this. Part of it. This is the, the P over A would be 520 over 80 for really long, 100 years or forever, infinity and beyond. The P over A is 1 over the interest rate. 
or the interest rate would be A over P, or the inverse of that. So the A over P is the interest rate. So it's A80 over 520P that is the interest rate for this. And so that's 15.4%. And the other ones are what? What's this one? 16.4. 16.4. And this one is? 16.1. So they're all greater than 12% are MAR. So that's, that's good in all cases. If we want to do the benefit cost, back to We played around a lot when we have different numbers for the for disbenefits and different costs, but it comes down to that the benefit cost ratio is is the benefits over the costs on an equivalent basis. So we can either put them into all both of them into annual worth or you can put them both into present worth. So we already have benefits on an annual. If we want to do the benefit cost, we need the in cost on an annual. And I don't have those with me. Let's see if I have them on there. Spreadsheet here. So what'd you get for these numbers? Annual worth of initial cost. What is it for aquaculture? Somebody yell it out. What is it? One more time. 74,400. 74,4. This one is? 62,400. 62,400. And this is? 56. All right, so then we could take the benefit cost ratio would be uh, 100 over 74.4 or 80 over 62.4 or 90 over 66. What did you get for present worth of annual benefits? I could probably do that. What is this one? I think I could have done that one, right? It's one over one twelfth of. 
Oh, yeah, one more. One over 0.12 times that, and this one would be. On devil, you say. And this one is? So then our benefit cost ratio we could also calculate as uh, now we have, which one is eight, 833 over 620 or 667 over 520 or 750 over 550. Is that right? Those should come out the same. And I think I have those here. So that be 1.34. Is that right? This is 1. Point, wait. 52, 8, 62, 10, 55, 9. That's the one I skipped, okay. Uh, 1. 1.28, and this one is 1. 1.36. So all those are greater than 1, so they're all good. This one's the best. Well, we want to walk through these to see which one really is the best. It may be the best, but we, uh, we want to walk through with our incremental method. And so, first of all, we compare our, we start with this one, and then we, it takes on C, canoeing. So the first one, is C minus B. So the change in benefits over the change in cost equals, we get the, looks like we get 10,000 more benefits for 30,000 more costs, 0 0.33. So that's greater than our MAR of 12%. So C is worth it, moving up to C, canoeing. And now we're going to take on A. A is more expensive, so I'm going to take A minus C, the change in benefits over the change in cost. Looks like going from C to A, it's uh, 10,000 more benefits. And it costs me 70,000 more to get those 10,000. And the ratio of that is 14%, which that is still greater than MAR, choose A. So A is the champion, C was a little bit higher benefit cost ratio on its own, but the extra benefits we get from going from canoeing to aquaculture is worth the extra cost at our MAR of 12%. So even though overall it doesn't have the benefit cost ratio, it's worth it to move from the canoeing to the 
aquaculture. Yep. Yes. Well, it's incremental. It's the same thing. It's the incremental BC ratio in that I took the the uh, benefits over the costs. I use, I use present words. So. Yeah. Okay. You're actually you're right there. So this is the incremental IRR. We also the next step I wanted to show you. Yeah, really the incremental BC ratio would be then to take these numbers and do the same thing. So the uh, he's so you take either one of these. We'll take the We'll do annual worth. So if we do, what was our first one? C minus B. If I do annual worth, it's 66,000 minus 62,4 over, that's the, Annual worth, oh, I did this backwards, didn't I? This is the cost. The benefits, so it would be C minus B would be 10,000, which that's 550 minus 525. Wait, I can't read here. Harder than it looks. So that is equal to 10,000 over 3,600. Greater than one, that's good. And then we take our next step a minus C, and the <coughs> change in, this is benefits over costs, the change in benefits equals the, going from, where are we going, from C up to A, so we're going 100,000 minus 90,000. And for that, we go from 750 up to 833. So that, did I do that right? I looked, did I look at the wrong number again? Yes. Okay. Uh, Oh, this, okay, annual cost. Sorry, I keep doing this. I need to write these in different colors so I can do it. So this would be the 74, 4 minus the 66, which is 10,000 over 8,400. So that's greater than 1, not much greater than 1. But it is greater than one. So A is the best. So you're right, I said incremental BC and then I did incremental IRR first. <coughs> incremental BC is you come up with the same thing, but it's just a different way of looking at it. Yeah, that actually matches my numbers from that. By the way, so this was a test problem in the past. This is also problem 1017 in the text.
we skipped one of those just to make it save a, save a step for the exam. But I put an extra I put an extra zero on it. My wife and I years ago we did we used to work in children's church every Sunday and the we went off for church sent us off some, some training children's church. One thing they told us when you have games for children, don't make something worth three points. Make it worth three thousand points or three million points or something like that. So thought I'd make it worth a little more, put a zero on there. I don't know if anybody caught it, but the, uh, the after-tax cash flow problem on the test with the third year, with the MacHurst with the third year, that was the example we did in class with uh, either one, one more or one fewer zeros. I forget which way we went. But. All right, so uh, just since the test two, our new stuff is benefit cost, and then we had uh, break-even analysis, sensitivity analysis, and does anyone need to review that? I think when we did it, I handed out the example problem before we even talked about it, and I think you all figured it out. So I don't know that we need to review that. Anything else we need to review? <coughs> Questions? <laughs> so the final is cumulative. It will have a couple things from the last part of it. We'll have a benefit cost problem on there. I actually have a draft of it with me. The Professor Heising and I are working on it and kicking ideas around, but so it's not, not done yet. But uh, Cumulative, but we will hit the last one. Oh, wow. Problem one. Benefit cost method. A whole lot like the one we just did. It's not, it's not the same problem with just different zeros. It's a different problem, but. Uh, replacement analysis. Yeah, uh, you know how to do that one, right? The whole trick, the easiest mistake to make on it, the whole trick is you put the salvage value where? Yeah, so you put it on the, the trade-in value of your car instead of putting it on, well, if I get a new car, I'll get this trade-in money. No, it's if I keep the car, I'm passing up that trade-in. So you put it on your... What do we call that? The defender takes on the challenger. Oh, cool. One where we got, you, we had several of these, test one, uh, where you have a number of units and you got to multiply something by the number of units. That's just a present worth problem. And again, it's not for sure that we'll stay with these exact problems. But. Ah, break-even problem. A whole lot of the ones we did in class. I really think you could have done that on, on the, the first exam. The first exam, the first part of it, we were talking about break-even for a company. How many do they need to sell or what break-even? The difference when we jump to the, the latter part of the class is we're looking at two different alternatives and when they break even with each other instead of w when does one break even with itself. But, so, basic idea. Oh, another one. Yeah. Maximize profit. Did, uh, this is not, this is A versus B. It's not how many units, so on the test one, 
solving for the number of units in a break even, a number of you wanted to jump to the equation with a d squared and stuff like that. This one you can just lay it out and just kind of work through the costs and stuff. Oh yay! An after tax cash flow problem with the Mackers tables. Now this one, and like I keep saying, I don't know that we'll choose the same problems that we have in our draft, but so this would be a whole lot like problem 11 on, on uh, test two. It, this particular one does not have the, wor the weird third year thing where we sell it during the third year and we've got to calculate the <coughs> book value and the gain on that and stuff like that. Some kind of chapter one kind of stuff. One where we have to use all our different methods to evaluate a project. That one last year, I think everybody got that one. And then a couple problems on bonds. So if you understood what we talked about today, how a bond breaks down, how that produces the cash flow. And once you have the cash flow and you analyze that, you'll be able to do that. There may be a problem on the non-annual compounding, internal compounding. If you're asked to come up with an effective interest rate, you can use that formula. Yep. Yes. So for bonds, if we're given the face value, that's the, the F, the value at the end? Exactly. The, so the, yeah, that's the, that's the money, the face value is the money you're getting at the end of the thing. This, uh, it's a little description in here, I don't know if that really helps you too much, but. Bond value equals the present worth of the payments the purchaser, the holder of the bond, receives during the life of the bond at some interest I. So you get those payments, you also get the payment at the end of the thing too. So I can calculate a present worth of that. The bond yield equals the computed interest rate of the bond value compared to the bond cost. This is present worth, this is IRR. So once the bond produces the cash flow, then you just analyze it according to, you know, chapter five or chapter methods and chapter four equations. So that's the trick to the bond, okay. What are the terms of the bond? How often does it pay? How much? At the end, got my cash flow. Okay, now I do my analysis. Questions on anything else? So, uh, a little note on grading. The, uh, actually the first time I taught this, or first couple times I taught this class, a J-term class, I didn't know this. J-term grades actually aren't due for a couple weeks. And so, but I'm going to try to turn these around pretty quick, but it, it might be, I don't know if I'll get them done on the weekend. Maybe. The, uh, what happens next week? The real spring semester starts, right? So, so, but, so don't, if you don't see grades right away, I mean, that might happen that you don't see it right away. The first couple times I was like, I gotta have grades in by Friday and anyway. But I'll try to turn those around. And my philosophy with w once I have the grades, I'll, uh, I'll I put it in the spreadsheet and play around with it and I, I consider the totality of the evidence. So in other words, if you know, if you're borderline 
I look through it and say, you know, look, I look for a reason to, to bump you up. I'm not going to bump you, I mean, it, I'm not going to bump you down from, from what your score is, but I look for a reason to bump you up. And so, anyway, I put down a spreadsheet. One, one year I did it, uh, I, don't, uh, I, I don't think it was for this class, actually. That's a different class. I did the kind of what if. Well, you know, his homework grade was high. He bombed this one test. What if he bombed the... Uh, and in the process of playing around with that, I actually, I don't remember why, but I lowered the test score of one of the students just to see what would happen, just like for five minutes or something like that. But apparently, I don't know if he looked at it or if he got a notification that something changed or whatever. And he said, why did you lower my <laughs> test grade by 20 points? <laughs> and I just wrote him back and said, spite. So, <laughs> And he, he said, okay, I understand. So, so. Any other questions about anything? Okay. Our remaining thing of business is the, uh, the evaluations, which should be releasing in about two or three minutes to you. If you get on Canvas, or the announcement is, you can, you can get at it another way. I have a... I'll pack up and get out of here. I do have a special treat for Matt. He was so cute. He was like 15 then, but. Okay. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Finally printed. Okay. will be in the folder. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Okay. My budgeting assignment wasn't in the folder. Okay. So, do you want me to stop by your office later? To do you have something you can send me? Because I have to, every piece of paper on my desk. Yeah. So I want to remember. Print it out. Yeah, if you could. Okay. That's fine. I think I went through every piece of paper on my desk, but. Yeah.